Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars, some of my favourite people, and a Yorkshire lass who has got a voice like no other. She's been doing it for decades. She still looks fabulous and is one of my favourite people. Leslie Garrett, how are you? Hello. <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. I'm interrupting your holiday. I'm awfully sorry about that. That's all right. I was going to say, I'm just having a, a little holiday. Uh, we've got a, a little cottage in France and we've escaped. And I'm actually, for once in my life, by myself with my husband. <laughs> this sounds fun. Is your life great now? I mean, I look at your diary and what you do and it seems to me you pick and choose. You have some great projects, don't you? Yes. I'm having the best time of my life, actually, Alex, because... To be honest, this is all a bit of a bonus. I, I wasn't expecting to still be singing, at, you know, at my age, and I'm thrilled that, you know, I still am. Uh, but I'm, I'm, as you say, picking and choosing, doing the things that, that, that appeal to me. Um, I've been having a wonderful time recently doing some very interesting modern opera. Um, I uh, came back to opera about five or six years ago after I'd been doing musicals for a while and discovered, really, that there were no roles for for older sopranos. Um, there were a few kind of roles for, for, for mezzos, but they were mostly bag ladies and witches, and, you know, there were no <laughs> roles for, for good roles for older sopranos. So I started banging the drum and saying, come on, you know, you've got to write some roles for us. If you want opera to be seen as a, a, as a contemporary art form, you've got to write a, um, about contemporary society, and contemporary society is full of powerful older women. So, mm. you know, you've got to look, look at our go own government, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, but, we, we, yeah, we run countries now. We're captains of industry, and, um, and we're not represented in, in, in opera. Uh, and to my great delight, various wonderful composers have, have written roles for me. Um, I've just actually finished a tour with Welsh National Opera. We've done a fantastic uh, new style of piece with them. It's, it's like a, a kind of music hall opera, really. Um, uh, and we, we explored the the, um, the life of a wonderful woman called Margaret Mackworth, the Viscountess Ronva, uh, who was a very, very powerful suffragette. It was a, a piece we did to celebrate 100 years of suffrage. Uh, and I played five different men in that uh, <laughs> in that opera. So you're you're absolutely right. I'm basically doing things that, that that I've never done before. You know, I'm taking roles that are are, are new, uh, that are pioneering, uh, and I'm having a great time doing it. Does it feel a bit like then that in Lemmy's you go from Cosette one minute and then you're Tenardier the next and there's nothing in between? Is that what you're saying in show business? Sort of, it's it's you're either the the young juvenile lead and then you go to sort of some old battle axe. Is that the problem? Yeah, I think so. Certainly for sopranos, uh, lyric sopranos like myself, uh, the the roles that we uh, that we uh, uh, we have are are young roles. You know. Um, in my case, I played, you know, Susanna, Despina, um, Mimi. Um, you know, these these were young, beautiful women, uh, powerful women. But then, um, older women just are not featured. Do not feature in opera. I mean, there was there was a practical reason for that actually as, as well. I mean, apart from traditionally, I mean, women weren't significant in society after they'd passed childbirth uh, years, child rearing years. Um, but also. Uh, to be honest, the voice, voices, older women, uh, women's voices, sopranos' voices, would drop after the menopause. You'd lose the top of your voice. Uh, so, you know, you couldn't get the high notes anymore. But that's not the case these days because we have the wonder that is HRT. So, you know, we're all going on and we need roles writing for us. Uh, and, and that's, be, you know, been my message. And, and I think it's, it's getting through. You're coming to the Bedford Park for proms in Bedford Park on Sunday, 5th of August, 2018. And what's interesting about you, the many years we've been talking, you've always had that human touch. And I look at what's happened with the charts lately with people like Alfie Bow and Catherine, and they've sort of nicked your act in a way. You were one of the first that made classical music accessible. That's very big to you, isn't it? That normal people can enjoy this type of music. That was always, I think, a bit of a mission for me, yes. Because... Because I grew up, um, I grew up in South Yorkshire. Um, I was born in Thorn in a pit village. My family were working people, miners, railway workers, steel workers. 
Um, and music was always the most important thing in, in, our, in our lives, really. Everybody was into music. Everybody was into all kinds of music. And opera um, was available to me um, as, as a kid in a way that I discovered it wasn't to other kids um, who didn't have that kind of, uh, uh, of background. Um, and I suppose we're talking about music in the community. And music in the, music in the community has always been something I'm absolutely passionate about, um, and particularly opera. Uh, that's why I'm, I love doing concerts like the Bedford Park concert, because we're, we're bringing classical music and opera to an enormous audience, a very wide audience, um, who, are, who are coming to, to just have a great time and 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 enjoy the you know the, the beauty of sound mm. um you know when i was a kid all all the music i learned was was really around the piano with my family you know everybody played something everybody sang you know um and and at school you know we did a different show every term uh, and that, that was where i learned my music and discovered my passion for singing and for uh, and, and for performing as well and these things don't exist anymore people don't sing around the piano there is no music in schools to speak of anymore it's just not taught uh, which is a tragedy in my view so these great concerts these open air gala concerts especially when you know thankfully the, the weather this year is it looks like it's, it's fairly reliably warm and sunny you know they are they've taken the place i think of 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 that that community music that i grew up with mm. um you know because it's just lovely you stand i stand on the stage and i look out at the families picnicking you know dad having a beer mom having a glass of wine whatever or the other way around uh, mm. you know the kids running about it, it's just it, it, it's fantastic it's the way music should be enjoyed and there's nothing gives me greater pleasure I was at Annick Castle last night, Il Diva on tour doing these castles and outdoor events. And the sense of community you get when everybody's on the same page, there's nothing like it. I wonder how it feels for you when you're the sort of star, the pin focuses on you and you get to shine. It, there can't be a more magical moment when that synergy comes together. No, you're absolutely right. There isn't. There isn't anything that, that, that tops it. Um, especially when you can get people singing along. You know, we do the sort of last night of the prom stuff and we and Jerusalem and Land of Hope and Glory and everybody's waving flags and singing and you are as one. You are, you know, the, the audience on the stage are as one. That we're, we're, We are performers together. Uh, I, I think I've always been aware of that. I remember, you know, you were asking me about uh, kind of how, uh, in a way, you know, how, how it all started. And I remember when I started making out Albums way back in the 90s, um, you know, I, I wanted to tour the albums like the pop singers did. I said, why can't we tour classical albums? Mm. You know, why, why do, you know, <laughs> that's what the pop singers do, and that's how they get the music out there. And I remember back in the 90s with the RPO, I used to tour my albums, you know, so I, because I, I firmly believed, um, that was a sort of principle of mine, that I, I wouldn't record anything I couldn't sing live. Mm. Um, and, I didn't sing everything I recorded, uh, you know, but I, I, I could have done, uh, but I, I chose what I thought the public would like. And, and that was, that really worked. That, that you know, the, we, we again got, got the, pe the public to, to share in something that, you know, they'd heard on the radio or they, they bought the, you know, the CD back in those days. And, you know, and they were able to experience music live because I, I suppose... You know, it, it, I don't. I hate to say that. Uh, you know that, that this is a, that this is a problem. But in one way, the fact that music is so accessible now through you know through the internet means that possibly people are not as inclined to to come to the live experience. And I'm I'm really trying to to, to fight that because it's a different experience hearing music live. It's great to hear it, you know, through the, the, the magic of, of, of technology. And I'm not knocking that, but to hear music live is a completely different experience. And I think, you know, we've got to still keep keep bashing <laughs> that message home because, yeah. you know, it it it, it, it the music is meant to be heard as it's made. You know, the, when I take a breath, Alex, 
and I know that breath's going to turn into sound mm. and it's sound that is going to make someone laugh or cry or remember a wonderful experience of their own or connect to an emotion they've buried you know that is a magical breath that is a, mm. a moment that's a divine moment almost you know that the creation of sound at its source is it's it's magic <laughs> it really is yeah. it's, 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 it's ex an extraordinary thing to do and to witness. Finally, on music itself, I mean, last night hearing that live orchestra was amazing, yet the BBC proms, for some reason, I don't seem to connect with it until the last night. Do you think that's good for popular classical music, or is it not aimed at people like me? I think the proms uh, are amazing. Um, it's the biggest and um, best uh, festival in the world. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, they, they perform... And they should perform new works and works um, that are neglected. Uh, but they do uh, have a, a, a lot of concerts where you can hear uh, music that you know that that everybody knows and longs to hear. Um, you know, it, it's a hugely varied experience. One of the things I hope to do when I retire, ha ha, is is actually I'd love to go to a to a, a you know to a different prom every night. It would be just great to really explore the proms or maybe not every night but maybe you know, two or three a week just <laughs> yes. to get the range of what they do yeah. uh, but I'm sorry you feel that Alex I'm I do I've got to be honest I mean I watch it I try and get into it on BBC4 and I find sometimes it's too clever for me but that might just well, be me don't watch those then you know, yeah. they're, for, they're for somebody else you know, I'm just too down market Leslie you know me that's what no, it is you're not, that's <laughs> well if you are I'm there with you <laughs> talking of which the last time I think I saw you was at Loose Women and you did that I mean you've done so many things through your career and again people love you very much I guess it's partly down to the time that you've been doing it. it's been a long while you've been in our lives hasn't it oh bless you yes I, I suppose I started in my very first gig was in 1980 so I don't know. Do the math stuff. Guess that's getting. Well, I can do that because it was the year I was born. Which oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes me feel great. <laughs> no, seriously, it does. <laughs> uh, and I suppose, yeah, I, I guess while ever you know I'm, I'm being offered work, I'll say yes. I'm not very good at saying no. I've never been any good at saying no. Um, but um, I, I am careful to, you know, to to uh, maintain my instrument, as it were. I have still mm. have singing lessons every week. Uh, I'm still, I'm still, you know, very keen to, to develop my sound because it never stops developing. Um, I'm finding now that because I've had such a, a, a long career, I've, I've experienced a lot of, I've experienced a, a lot of life and all of that can go into singing. So I can, I find I can sing um, music that has a, a, a great pathos comes more naturally to me now. Uh, I used to be much more drawn to comedy, but I, I'm finding the serious roles now are very satisfying because I've got something to bring to them. Um, so that's 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 great fun, and I'll never stop giving concerts. I, I just love my concert work. Uh, it, 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 it's the way, as we've said, to you know to, to reach people. Uh, to reach people's hearts, I think. I, most, I remember seeing you once, I think it was in a cave somewhere near Malaga, and it was one of the most stunning gigs ever. Again, you, you seem to fill the room with that voice effortlessly. I wonder physically <laughs> how draining it is, because there's a lot going on with that breath, isn't there? Yes, it's, it's physically exhausting. Uh, opera singers don't sing with microphones, or are trained not to, mm. uh, in the opera house when, when we're almost never mic'd perhaps a little for dialogue, but not for singing. Um, but but then, you know, uh, the recent opera I've just done, uh, Rhonda Rips It Up that I was mentioning, that was all done without uh, without mics. Um, but I, I, I always sing, even if I have a mic, I sing as if I haven't. I always sing with my, with my technique. But that technique does take it out of you. It does exhaust. Um, mm. And I, I have to try and keep as fit as I can. Um, it, it's a, it's a, it's a really an athletic pursuit. It's, it's, you have to be very fit to sing, to, to keep singing. Um, but just going back to what you were saying about loose women and, and all the other slightly crazy things I've done in my life, I suppose it's always been with the intention of showing that opera singers are ordinary people, mm. you know, that we're, we're friendly, normal people who, 
you know, who who might live next door. I always say I'm the demon next door. And, hmm. <laughs> and the, you know, the, the, the music that we perform is for everyone. It's, it's, the, it's your music. It's, it's not for a special elitist group. It's for everybody. It was written for everybody. You know, Puccini, Verdi, uh, the great composers, Mozart, they, they all wrote music for everyone to hear. Um, and, and I think that's, it's a simple philosophy, I suppose. It's a simple idea. Not even a philosophy, it's an idea. Just that, you know, everyone should, should have the, the experience of listening to great music. It's sad that I have to ask this question, but at a time of Me Too when everybody's talking about it, you've always seemed so formidable and confident. Has it always been easy being you, or do you think if you'd have been a man it would have been even easier and you'd have got on better and achieved more because you weren't a lady? It's a sad question, but it's one that everybody's asking. No, it's, it's, it's a very uh, appropriate question, and I, I think my career's been so idiosyncratic, Alex, that... I can't imagine that it would have been easier uh, or better if I'd been a man. Certainly the music I've sung, I've I'd, I'd always just sung everything I wanted to sing, irrespective of whether it was a man's song or not. I think I was one of the lucky ones, and I I just did my own thing, and it it struck a chord with the public, and, and I was off to the races, basically. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, I've always just followed my, my instincts about music and about performing. I've never had any real problems or if I have I've just you know slapped their face and moved on Uh, (laughs) um, you know it it was in the old days you know you had to watch out for yourself I was one of three girls we have two sisters and our parents always brought us up to take care of ourselves really Mm. and to to, and to be independent and strong, and we all are. If we've ever encountered any unwanted sexual advances, we've, we've just dealt with a, with a, with a swift uppercut. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always been fine, but I shouldn't laugh, I shouldn't joke, no. because I know for many women it's not that easy. Right. And I'm very, very glad that, you know, that things are beginning to, well, to come out into the open and be dealt with, and that society is changing its attitudes, as it should be. In When I was a young, younger, you... you and, and you shouldn't have to. It should not be something a, a, a young woman or a young man has mm. to uh, has to watch out for or has to protect themselves from. Before we go, let's talk about that voice and that sound and that amazing thing that you give to audiences, that gift. I've been very lucky interviewing people from Andrea Bocelli to you to all kinds of people over the years. It's a gift, isn't it? I mean, you can't be trained that. I know you work hard at maintaining it, but you had to be born with it, surely. Yes, I think that's true. I think that's true. Um, the, the, the skill is in, as you say, developing it, well, recognise it in the first place or being lucky enough to be with people who recognise it and help you to develop it. Um, but that magic, that connection, that ability to, to touch people's hearts, I think that's God-given. I think that, that comes from a place that I don't understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But what I a just gift. give thanks for every day. It's 14 years since you did Strictly. I notice you pick wisely when you do shows. Will we ever find you in the jungle or anywhere like that? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> With all those creepy to crawlies, are you kidding? <laughs> no, I was very happily did MasterChef last year uh, and, very, and sadly was knocked out in the semi-final. I, I always get to semi-finals. I just got to the semi-final of MasterChef and a semi-final of, a semifinal of Strictly, semi-final of MasterChef. Uh, I... I, I couldn't make a curry can you believe what a shame <laughs> and, and I got knocked out but yes I love doing reality television when it when it's when it's when there's, when there's the opportunity to learn something um you know I very much enjoy uh, I, I'm quite competitive I quite like you know doing well um I suppose I'm more competitive with myself than with other people you know I, li- I like to do better than I thought I could <laughs> a bit like the England football team yes uh, and uh, <laughs> Uh, and that's nice. That's always nice. Uh, but the main reason I love doing these programmes is because the people will think, well, we didn't know opera singers did that. And I like that. I like, I like to, to make people think, I didn't think, you know, I didn't think opera singers went on Strictly. 
yeah. and that makes me laugh that makes me happy <laughs> i think you've always done that and it's so important to make people realize that this music is accessible it is delicious it is delightful and people like you are a gem you're a star and i thank you for your time you can see leslie garrett uh, on tour throughout 2018 uh, you can go to leslie garrett dot co dot uk and see it at proms in bedford park which is taking place on sunday the 5th of august 2018 a fabulous day with a live orchestra endless turns but starring the wonderful leslie garrett thank you so much for your time oh alex it's been a, a joy i hope you'll be able to edit that down a little bit because i got i waffled on a bit i loved every um, second i'm not editing it oh sweetie thank you <laughs>